Hey gang, uh, this is Vlad again. So today we're going to talk about um, XLR cables. Specifically, we'll be talking about a transparent Ultra XL XLR speaker, I'm sorry, XLR interconnect and whether or not it it is worth the money at least uh, as far as my system is concerned so those cables uh, will be replacing these um, audio quest diamond bags these are about 170 dollars brand new and probably about 100 dollars you can get them used um, there was no problem with them it's just at some point i decided you know what i'm going up um, in terms of upgrades for everything like preamp, power amp, speakers, and uh, now the turntable, this one is going away and uh, in RPM 10 will be replacing this RPM 9. So I thought maybe it's time for me to also upgrade XLR interconnect as well. But then what, uh, what to get, what to replace those diamond bags with. So here is the thing. Um, I read a lot of reviews and most of them have pictures and a lot of those pictures basically uh, they show what kind of cabling uh, those people use and for the most part uh, it's either really expensive MITs, um, music interface technologies, or it's um, uh, a lot of European stuff we don't see here in the States, like Kubala Sosna and so on. And quite often I could, I could see uh, transparency, this kind of cable. So that got me thinking, okay, so these are not just uh, people who buy expensive stuff, but also equipment makers. Um, they prefer this brand. Why? I started to look that up and there were a few pictures of a uh, listening room, test room, that uh, Audio Research uh, has and they basically use uh, transparent technology cabling, not just uh, interconnects or speaker cables, but also um, power cables pretty much for everything and of course their stuff is uh, uh, top of the line it's like Magnus Magnum Opus and all that stuff and those transparents cost you like thirty thousand dollars each not not each but a pair so also uh, that that is audio research so they prefer this kind of these kind of uh, cables uh, if you go to the speakers they use in their um, test room, those are Sonos uh, Faber. And if you uh, research that, uh, Sonos Faber also uses transparency in their room. So that got me thinking, okay, what is so unusual in these cables? And when I started to read up on this, uh, strange things popped up. First of all, if you go up the line, uh, the lineup for transparent technology, and you start buying more expensive cables, they start asking you questions like, what equipment do you have? So you tell them, okay, I have past labs, this uh, preamp and uh, audio research, power amp and so on. They start asking you about your room and other equipment. And you would ask a question, what does it have to do with the cables I'm buying? These are just cables. Turns out it does have a lot to do with how they configure a cable. So it's not just a cable to them. It's a, a, a part of the system and they want to adjust it to your system. So it sounds optimal. So <laughs> I said, okay, I need to try it. And I need, I need to try not just a low uh, shelf stuff that's not that different from, um, from uh, Audio Quest stuff, this stuff in terms of what it's made of, but cost three or four times more. Uh, but uh, at least mid-shelf um, mid lineup for transparent. So mid-shelf is this. Uh, so this is Ultra. Actually, it's Ultra XL. If you look, it says right there. So Music Link, 
there's a model number or serial number i have no idea so 293 293 xl no that's a model number so it says transparent ultra xl so um what this this line costs new about four thousand dollars and that was a few years ago if you want to buy it now it doesn't exist anymore i mean it does but it looks different so uh, as you go up there is a reference level then there is magna uh there's there's magna opus and those go those go up to thirty thousand dollars so this one costs about four thousand new i couldn't find exact number for this but let's say four thousand that's a fair number for it uh, i got it for 800 and we'll see if this cable uh that costs four thousand dollars new uh, is actually sounds better than this $170 cable and we're going to basically listen to it with this cable then with this cable and we'll see what it sounds like so uh, uh, hold on and uh, we're gonna give it a listen all right so we cue the LP to test the LP is going to be that can dance uh, the name of the release is either Dionysus or Dionysus. I don't know how to pronounce this. And it's going to be the last song on side one. It is simply amazing. All right, so this is the LP. The turntable is going away. I haven't sold it yet, but the replacement, uh, an RPM 10, is coming. This is an RPM 9. I already got the uh, tonal lift mechanism this one and it's just amazing um, you see when you touch it it raises the you see it raises up but when I touch it uh, I touch it so slightly I don't even feel touching it but it still goes up it's amazing so this is for the RPM 10 and this is the uh, formal preamp so uh, without, without further ado, ado let, let's uh, give this a listen so this is Death Can Dance.
probably going to pause and change the kit swap the cable so we changed the cables now we're going to listen what it sounds like with the $100 cables as opposed to $4,000 cables So there you have it, has been the comparison of uh, AudioQuest Diamondback and Transparent Ultra XL. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, um, if you could hear the difference, but from my perspective, what I could hear is a softer sound with Transparent. A slightly better dynamics and just a little bit, macro dynamics. Um, the slime was excellent and uh, slightly more details low level details um, but they're ever so slightly you could almost you have to go back from one cable to another to pinpoint them but definitely transparent gets those details last small details very good um, the drawback of the transparency was uh, um, the imaging I, I probably I think that Imogen was slightly worse than Diamondback, which uh, kind of surprised me. But um, uh, here's my take. Dynamics and resolution are the most important parts to me. If imaging is slightly worse, it's okay to me. I mean, I can tolerate that. But uh, what I cannot forgive is uh, uh, worse um, details when everything kind of too smooth to pinpoint different uh, you know, slight, uh, really quiet vocals or details that are kind of hiding in background. So that I cannot forgive, And but this cable just picks uh, those details perfectly. Now, is it worth the $3,900 difference? I don't know. Uh, it's hard to decide. I don't know if I'll keep it. Probably I will, because with uh, up upgrading everything else and then basically saying no uh, I will keep this a hundred dollars bottleneck so uh, because I don't want to spend more money uh, no I cannot do that I'll be basically thinking that my system is lacking and this is something that uh, I simply cannot do 
All right, so there it is. If you have any questions, please uh, post. Thanks for watching.